Hello, this is Courtney Lindop. Danielle Gaide. Linda Yunjin. And you're listening to the For a New Humanity podcast from Earth Management TV. Today's topic is owning our body, mind, and consciousness. That's an interesting thing you just said, Courtney, because owning my body, mind, and consciousness, isn't that already inherent? My mind, my consciousness, and especially my body, it's all a part of me or inside of me, and I carry it around with me everywhere. So don't I already own this? Why do we even need to talk about owning our body, mind, and consciousness? It seems kind of redundant. I know it does sound kind of weird and out there, but the basic concept is really about taking responsibility over what we have control over. Yeah, actually, I am so happy we're talking about this today. I love the topic of ownership. I can get really passionate about it because I feel like in my own practice, my own healing work, and also teaching many, many students over the past 20 years, I just... And then even just getting on social media, right, and just engaging in society and the world, it just is so clear how much all of us, we have the tendency to look outward, outside. I mean, we can't help, but there's so much stimulation. There's so much activity. There's so much drive to see what other people are doing, listen to what other people are saying. It could be friends. It could be doctors. It could be anyone. But then we're totally outside of ourselves and we fall into so many judgments of the outside of uh, blaming the outside you know comparing myself to the outside and seeing outside as better than or more than me so we lose the sense of selves so i feel like ownership the definition of ownership here is coming back to me taking it back. It's it's, my happiness is mine. This issue is mine. My health is mine. Therefore, there's something I can do about it when I own it, when it's mine. So it's really like coming back to me. Yeah, Danielle, I think what you said in your last comment about when it's mine, I can do something about it is really the key kind of issue in our discussion today. Because As I mentioned above, we might think that we inherently own these things. Of course, who else owns your body? You know, this is something that you're carrying. Who else owns your mind? Who else owns your consciousness? It's already contained inside of you. But when we look deeper inside of ourselves, it's, you know, it's worth your time to really question that belief, right? Do I really own these things? Because if let's try looking at it this way. If you're still confused, you're like, okay, I still don't get what you mean by that. In terms of our health. How often do we just give our power to professionals to just fix us? You know, we just live our lives however we want. And then when we feel sick, we go to a doctor or we go to a massage therapist and we say, just fix me. I don't know what to do. Just do something. Make me feel better. In terms of our happiness, something emotional, something with our mind, how often do we just give our power to our friends, our Uh, spouse, the person that we're with to be like, okay, make me happy, do something, say something, give me something to make me feel good about myself. So like this, how often do we give our powers away to outside forces, whether they're people, environments, or things outside, outside circumstances, outside forces to dictate how we feel on a daily basis? Yeah, I, I love that that explanation. But I still think it can be a little bit of a sensitive subject, right? Because this is not to excuse bad behavior. If somebody does something really awful to you, it doesn't mean that it's okay that they did that. And now you have to kind of deal with that. But it's not to make light of what people have gone through. But it, it does speak to maturation. It does speak to, you know, what are you going to, somebody did something to me. Now, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to get more angry? Are you going to spend your whole life, you know, blaming them and being upset? Um, Or are you going to be able to kind of make a shift and, and a change in the way that you perceive what happened to you? Right. And I just want to comment, you know, if you find yourself fitting the description of what I just mentioned, like, oh yeah, you know, I'm one of those people who rely on doctors or, yeah, I really rely on my spouse to make me happy or, yeah, I kind of really do on a daily basis give my power away. 
please don't feel bad because I'm not saying like, if you do this, you're bad and this is not the way to live and you have to do the opposite. And that's the good way to live. That's not our point in this podcast here. It's not a matter of good or bad because, you know, we were kind of taught this in society. Society kind of kind of pushes the agenda of rely on outside things, focus on outside things. So we're conditioned to behave this way. It's not a matter of I'm a good person if I do this, I'm a bad person if I do that. It's I just wanted to mention that we're just we're just taught to behave this way in society and it deserves us taking a step back and really looking at what's happening, the narrative that was placed onto us since we were very young. Yeah, yeah. we're taught to blame. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. I completely agree with everything that you're saying and both of you are saying. And it is a sensitive subject. But the thing is, the the bottom line of this topic today is really about empowerment, right? Helping people empower themselves. Taking ownership is it's not about uh, blame, blaming myself or anything that has happened in the past, blaming others or blaming myself. It's kind of getting out of that whole track and just embracing everything that I have, everything that I have experienced, everything that I deal with, with my body and my mind. These are, this is mine in this lifetime. This is what I have to work with. This is what I have to solve and overcome and, and study and grow with and heal through. Therefore, I'm taking my power back when I choose to do that, when I choose to own it and wrap my arms around it and embrace it. You know, it's, yeah, it, it's, it's really giving me the opportunity to realize, hey, this is mine. I can do something about it. So then my brain starts to wake up. And I start looking for what I can do and I feel energized. I feel alive. I feel empowered. Think about when it's like, oh, well, if that person would just stop treating me that way, then I'd feel better. Or if the world was different, then I could have a happier, more abundant life. Yeah. Waiting for the outside to change, I lose energy. I lose power. But when I recognize there's something that's mine that I can do something about, which is my reaction, my response to my interpretation of, now my energy is coming. My power is coming. I love that. I love that. It's not, so ownership is responsibility, but it really, it's self-empowerment. Yeah. Putting things back in my, in my hands, I can do something about it. Um, Yeah, I love that. I can feel that. It feels empowering to me. So it sounds great. How are we going to go about taking our power back? especially if we've got kind of society's energy pushing back against us and this kind of blaming culture, you know, what are we going to do? Yeah. You know, I think it starts with a choice. I have to decide that that's what I want to do. Actually, something Linda was saying earlier, I was thinking it actually starts with self-awareness, right? I have to take a good look at myself and see if I'm doing that and then decide I want to take my power back. And then then. It begins from there. It's kind of like what we talked about in our last episode. We begin to look at it from a different perspective. We shift our consciousness. We shift our perspective to see, oh, you know, I was. I was giving my power away. I was waiting for the outside to change. When if I look at it from a slightly different angle, there is something I can do today in this moment or even just asking what can I do right now and shifting the perspective back to me? Yeah. Yeah. We've definitely talked about this too in a, in a way last week. This is, this is growth. This is maturation. This is our evolution of consciousness. As we kind of expand ourselves, we expand our capacity to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then for me, you know, before I even learned about this concept of owning my mind, body and consciousness, I felt, you know, I wanted to change a lot of things in my life, but I wasn't able to and I didn't know why. But when I took a step back and looked, you know, it was because I wanted that person to change, that thing to change. I wanted to have a different job, a different house, if a different if a different city, like trying to change these outside things to be perfect was draining a lot of my energy. And 
for all the energy that I was putting into it, there was no reward. So maybe you feel the same way the listeners out there, you know, if you feel like you're constantly putting in energy to change outside things, but things in your life are still the same and you feel no hope, it really might have to start with what you just mentioned, Danielle, that shift in consciousness, that awareness that, you know, maybe I need to take it back and then own up to all of these things. Mm -hmm. And a great way to do that is through meditation, right? That's our, that's our practice of being introspective, looking inward. And then emotional processing plays a role here too. You know, if you're have a, an interaction with somebody that's some sort of fight or some sort of conflict, being able to kind of take a step back and digest what happened rather than taking actions right away or, or like let yourself be angry, move through it, and then you can act from a more kind of confident or, or uh, centered place. And that's really what meditation enables you to do. Yeah, I, I totally agree. It's all about coming back in inside bring my awareness to myself. And sometimes you might even just use your body for that, right? You might even feel like I just need, just need to move so that I can feel myself. Sometimes the outside pull is so loud and so strong, you know, and we're just, we're, we're lost. We disconnect. So then at that time, just stimulate your body, get up, go for a walk, go for a jog, put on some music you love and dance around so that you can feel yourself. You can feel your muscles moving. You can feel your breath inside of your body. And now with my awareness naturally, I mean, I know when I do that, I, I use that, those kind of tools all the time. Naturally, my mind starts coming back to me. I can feel myself and I start to see myself from a new perspective. It just sort of starts naturally once I can feel myself again. Yeah. And, um, you know, you guys just mentioned about being in control of your emotions and, you know, moving your body and doing all that. And I just wanted to make a side note that for all the listeners out there, Courtney is an expert in emotional intelligence. So if you need help, you should contact her. Danielle is also an expert in emotional self-mastery. So if you feel like, you know what, I just need some help and I can really use that, reach out to Courtney and Danielle. Just side note. So that brings me to what I'm going to say. Ultimately, I feel like there's no shame or guilt in receiving help from others. You know, a lot of times when we talk about kind of like ownership, people go the complete opposite way. It's not black or white. It's not like you go from being, you know, reliant on people and then now we're asking you to be completely self-reliant and don't talk to anybody about your problems. Really don't take it this way. That's not our message or intention at all. There's no shame and guilt in receiving help. Actually, we all need help. We should receive help. That's how our human species survived for thousands of years on community, on receiving help from each other for our growth and survival. So it's okay to get help from professionals, especially when you need it. If you need to go to a doctor, please go to a doctor, okay? Don't speak by yourself. You should get help when you need it. Our point, I just want to make our point very clear, is the difference between receiving help and being dependent. There's a fine line between those two. It's okay to receive help, but if you feel like you've crossed over slowly to the other side where now you're becoming dependent and you're relying on others to get you to a certain state physically, emotionally, or mentally every day, then chances are that it will greatly affect the quality of your life because you just said, okay, everybody else fix me. I don't know what to do with myself. Living that kind of life, you may be alive, but that's not your life. And we want you to be in a place where you can create the best life that you can. I think that's why we even started this podcast, right? To have discussions on how to help people do that. And it all starts with ownership, realizing I have the power over my body, mind, and consciousness. And ultimately, yes, I can receive help, but the responsibility of taking care of it every day is on me. Yeah. Yeah. It's a cooperative effort, really. Right. I mean, definitely we all need community and we need supporters, but we also real healing is going to happen when I bring my part to the table. You know, when my healer or doctor or teacher or mentor brings their part and I bring my part, which is the, the willingness to own my stuff, look at me go within, search for the answers within. When we're both doing this together, that's when 
healing and transformation happens. Right. Right. Because a doctor can tell you to eat healthy, but you're the one who's going to have to go home and do that research and do that food prep every day, three meals a day in order to do that. It really does take your energy. It does take your willingness to kind of contribute. Um, and not just contribute, you know, it really is that, that perspective too, that at the end of the day, at the, the bottom line is it, it comes down to me. And, and that's where I think we're going to be the most happy when we're self-sufficient, when we're independent, when we're able to do things for ourselves, we feel good. It, it makes us confident. Um, you know, it, it, it enables us to even do bigger things yeah. when we have that kind of self-confidence. And help others. Yeah. 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 Connecting to the answers within me is like the biggest kind of research for being able to share those kind of tools and that wisdom with others. And actually only you know your body. So you might be getting advice from somebody, but you're the one who's going to have to feel and sense, so is this the right thing for me? Yeah. 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 And then, you know, another kind of side note is if you do, you know, rely on outside people to tell you what's wrong with you and then they misdiagnose you or they tell you wrong information and you did something that is not in line with what you truly need because you weren't connecting to yourself on your own. I mean, that responsibility is also on me because ultimately I did that to myself. I chose to give the power to them to tell me how to live my life. So anyways, yeah, so. We had unboxed a lot. We had a lot of big, kind of heavy for some people concepts for us to digest and think about because it's a real change in the way you think. And that could be very overwhelming to some people. And that's okay. Again, it's not about good or bad, right or wrong. It's just what it is. Bringing awareness to where I am and learning about things about maybe that's where I want to go. And I didn't know that that's where I wanted to go before. So you don't need to judge or analyze. It's just what is and reflecting on your state of being. So now, after we unboxed so much for you, it's time for our call to action. If you've been paying attention and listening to our previous episodes and following Earth Management TV's YouTube channel, you know that we talk a lot about this thing called Earth Hour, where we take an hour of our day to turn off the lights and connect to ourselves, do something that brings us back from the distractions of the outside world in. So we encourage you after all of this discussion we just talked about, maybe take some time to digest and have some meditative time to reflect uh, and connect and see in what areas of your life right now, maybe throw the question to you. In what areas of my life right now can I take more ownership? Where in my life did I give my power away to someone or something else? And can you, this is the ultimate question, can you, can I find the courage to take it back? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a perfect note to end on. Yeah. So I want to thank you all for listening. We hope that these conscious conversations are useful to you. Um, you know, we're happy to be here. I think we have a lot of fun talking about these things too. So stay tuned. Uh, next week's topic is about how we can create a better planet. We'll talk about some concrete actions we can take to uh, place the earth as a priority. You know, saving the earth is going to be a collective effort from the choices of each individual. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much. We'll see you Bye. next time. Bye. 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 Bye.